right, it is time for another episode of Drinks at Sunset with The, the Wise, Wise Guys. Guys. I'm J. Anthony McCarthy. I'm Steve Sabo. And we are two men of a certain age trying to find success in life and love uh, in this business called show out here in Hollywood. In La La Land. Yep. So um, we've been uh, 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 a little... little clinkage. Clinkage there. And what are you drinking today? I'm drinking my old standby, the Oak Heart... And uh, Dr. Pepper. Nice. And Delicious spice rum. Today I decided to try a little of the Canadian mist with some ginger ale. It's a, I just wanted something a little refreshing, and that sounded my dad, good. So. My dad would call that a bourbon and ginger. Yeah, well, that's that's delish, what I got there. A delish drink. I'm, I'm happy. So, um... Uh, it's uh, it's the rest of the country is in in a deep freeze. Well, the and, East Coast, yeah. yeah and well, we here, I would say a lot of the country, yeah, yeah a lot, yeah, a lot yeah. of the Midwest and the East mm-hmm. Coast in particular, and everything. And we here in uh, sunny Southern California are experiencing above average temperatures by as much as ten degrees. Yeah, it was um, uh, for the entire last two weeks. I know it's been it's been great. It's been wonderful. I, it's going to be in the seventies all this week. It was almost. It was in the eighties last week. Right. Can't complain. You know. It's the nice thing about about the weather though is you you, you get very very few uh, rain days here. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. I, I you know it, I just don't know how to you know say it any other than it's just it's it's dry but it's it's a good kind of dry. I mean yeah. it's. Well, the thing when I first came to Los Angeles um, in '94, I was I, I supported myself by waiting tables, and I, I was working at restaurants, and I had never been in uh, a climate ever where part of your restaurant was outdoors with no roof, right? With yeah. the full expectation that you were going to be able to use it 365 days <laughs> That's a year. That's right, right. Like, That's like true. The, there's so little rain out here that people don't plan for it. Exactly. You know, yeah. Which is why so much of the drainage and everything is so crap. When we do have torrential rains, streets are flooded. You know, parts of the the, the hills get worn away and and washed away. Amazing, huge parts of the beach get taken away. They have to put sand back and in. And then you get the wildfires because yeah. it's just so dry. Yeah, it's so the... dry. But and and, it's a, and we also this month has been a, a microquake we, a month. Uh, we've had you know on the anniversary of mm-hmm. the. Uh, Northridge earthquake. We've had um, a whole series of small earthquakes yeah. that we've uh, we've been able to feel and wake up to or go to sleep with every night. Yeah, kind of rocky in a sleep. Mm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, the other thing is is when it does rain, nobody knows how to deal with it. I no, mean, it's, it's like it's like snow is on the east coast. I mean, yeah. people know how to drive in it. They pull off to the side of the road because it's raining. Yeah, you know, and, or they go to they go way too fast rather than just yeah. driving like a normal person. And the really terrible thing is because of the drainage and everything, all of the oil and, 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 the and dust. slick stuff that's yeah. on the roads Turns gets into... pulled up um, from the rain, and the the, the roads get the, the major highways, the side streets get really really slick. Yeah, it is. It it, it is it is some uh, you know you have to be cautious, but still, it's not it's not as crazy as people make it out to be. But no. it is what it is. Yeah, you exactly know. right. You know, if you know how to drive on ice back east, then uh, you've got a you got a shot at it. Yeah, out yeah here. Just, right, exactly. It just uh, you don't need to go seventy five miles an hour when it's pouring down. Right? Exactly. Well, we want to say uh, thanks to Excite Radio for having us on again, eleven o'clock on Thursday. Yep. And uh, we appreciate that. So catch us uh, weekly on uh, Excite Radio. Excite Radio. E that is X S I T E Radio. So yes. Excite. Uh, also, you can find our uh, previous uh, episodes on uh, iTunes for free. Yeah, and uh, we also have a website called thewiseguys.net, thewiseguys.net, where you can catch a lot of our our funny videos and some of our web series there. Mm-hmm. And as always, if you have any questions or you have some topics you want us to delve into or whatever, you can e- email us at sswiseguys at aol.com. That's sswiseguys at aol.com. And also, of course, if you want to check out some of our videos, some of the things that we've done in the past, Visit our YouTube website, uh, um, The Wise Guys TV, The Wise Guys TV on YouTube, and you can see our uh, our genesis uh, as the Wacker Three Thousand uh, there you commercial. Go. So, yep. So, hey, tell me about your week. Well, it's, I think you it's had a pretty a, good week. I had a really good week. Um, last week, I had my first uh, voiceover auditions for for the year. Uh, things went well because of. Um, some work I I did uh, scratch track for um, uh, an animated film mm-hmm. called The Snow Queen 
uh, three or four years ago, mm -hmm. and um, they needed some uh, re-recordings of it. So I did that on Thursday. I also worked on a web series on Thursday called Tequila Mockingbird, Tequila Mockingbird, ah, uh, tequila which is Mockingbird. very fun. Um, uh, uh, yeah, I, guess, I got to play the dead. Tequila as part of our repertoire. <laughs> <here>. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, so Tequila Mockingbird. So I worked the whole day Thursday. So I booked out with my manager and my uh, voiceover agent. My voiceover agent gets um, three uh, um, opportunities that are right up my alley. So she sends them to me anyway. She says, put them on an MP3 and send them in because she knows I have a microphone set up at right. home and everything, okay. which I still haven't. Oh, yeah. I, I didn't go? do a good job. Well, what happened was um, I didn't, none of the stuff I sent her worked, but not because I did a bad job. It was because apparently I mislabeled it. Uh. Be, by mislabeling it, it won't go into her system so that she can submit it. Uh. And by the time I was able to respond and get it fixed, it was too late in the day and she had already, you know, made the, made the, uh, submissions but the good the good part of that is that i finally figured out at least a portion of what i need to do with my setup at home to make it work so oh, okay i can still definitely make it better and make it sound better and be able to edit better but at least i got the basics down to where i can make a submission you were know? you were you recording in a closet uh no i don't I, there's no closet big enough for me <laughs> in my apartment uh, i've got a i've got a beautiful uh, piece of equipment called the porta booth pro um, which is this, uh, uh, um, it's, it's got all of the, uh, um, uh, um, sound deadening stuff. It looks like a little tiny amphitheater that you stick your microphone in oh, okay. uh, and it zips together and it zips apart and puts it, you know, goes into a little carrying case and everything. Yeah. Like yeah, this? Exactly. And then you just talk into this? Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. Right. All right. Um, so you uh, don't have to be inside of it. It's no, just the but it does, it does help to be inside of it because you need something that deadens the space behind you as well. Ah, uh, I got you. Because I sent a recording to... Hence uh, the closet uh, yeah. reference. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I, sent, <laughs> I sent a recording for another guy who uh, works for the family guy. Ah, uh, okay. And Did you he, have that? Did you ever? I never got to. I've never gotten to go in and meet the guy because of traffic that day. So. Oh, okay. But I sent him a, a, a recording, and it, he said it was too live, too live. And what that means is that there was too much other stuff bouncing around, other than my voice. You know, it, it still had too too much of the room tone and everything behind oh, it. You know, wow. and he he could hear and the guy. The guy is a stickler, but that's why he's good at what he does. So. Right, right. Um, but apparently my, my recordings are good enough as they are that my agent is willing to submit me and that'll you know, at least get me in the door and get me to the places where somebody knows what they're doing. So Now, when you record a voiceover, do you do it a couple different ways or you do it just one way and then hope that's the way they want it? It depends upon the length of the voiceover. Okay. If it's a one word thing or if it's a one line thing, you'll you'll usually record it three ways and they want you to do it three completely different ways. Gotcha. They don't just want a variation on a theme. It's like they're great. They're great. They're great. <laughs> Those are all not really that different. different right. So they want something that's really different, yeah, gotcha. you know, for each one. They want to hear your range. Um, if it's one line, if it's one word, one line, yeah. two lines, maybe you yeah. could get away with that. Once you go beyond that, the, it starts becoming something where, you know, just the, the volume of what they're going to get, they may not listen to your second or third try. You okay. Know? Um, uh, the other thing is, is if it's, if you're submitting, um, let's say like I get a chance to do animation, uh, voiceover auditions, and I also get a chance to do, um, uh, computer game, uh, video game uh, voiceovers. You know, mm -hmm. for the for the characters in the game. Um, usually, it's like it's it's. Let me let me jump in. They give you character breakdowns, just like yeah. with regular acting. So you exactly have an idea right. of what this character is going to mm -hmm. be. Okay. Yeah, Mil military guy, gruff sounding, twenty to forty, been in the wars, he's seen it all. Right. You know, something like that. So you okay. know. You, you gonna and you wind up trying to come up with some kind of a guy that uh, you know he's been around the block and hey that sounds know. like a military guy been in the war seen it all that was awesome oh thanks <laughs> um, but uh, basically it, you know it, it winds up being a breakdown of a, of a dialogue and you have like several lines of dialogue right and you really don't get a chance to do much with it aside from owning it the idea being is that okay let's say your line is. Um, uh, uh, Roger that, okay? But the fact of the matter is, is it's Roger that after you've just seen something terrible happen. Right. And so you could do something where you just go, Roger that. But you need to maybe own it a little more like where you just, <gasps> Roger that. You know, where you add like a vocal sound, a, a tick or something like that without getting crazy about it. Right. So that it's a, it's a live human being that's saying it, not just somebody reading a line. 
Gotcha. Um, and that's still something that, you know, as much experience as I've had, it's still a learning process. I'm still trying to get better and better at it. So. It's it's also one of the toughest, toughest niches or uh, clicks to break into because it's so competitive, it's so tight, and and it's so hard for people to take a new guy and give him a shot because yeah. that's what I hear from voiceover. Yeah, it, it is. It's easy as, and as much work as you would like to do because you could go in – in your pajamas, and <laughs> tape it in your bedroom and closet, and and all that kind of stuff. The problem is, is it's it's tough just to get in, you know, to get an opportunity. And what, right. But once you break into it, uh, then then you you know you you're kind of like you know you're in the mix, and now now all of a sudden it's you're being seen, you're being heard, and you got a lot more opportunity. It's just making that breakthrough is is the tough part. Exactly, exactly right. And you know, and I've got a good agent who's uh, working hard for me. Oh, absolutely, um, absolutely. Poor Scott over at uh, Coast to Coast, and she, um, you know, she believes in me, and and um, you know, I, I'm. Uh, uh, I, you know, the fact that I haven't booked for her and she's still hanging there in there with me is, is uh, I mean, I can't ask for anything more aside from oh, booking at some point in time. Yeah. And I'm, I'm feeling good about this year. I feel like the, the things are headed in the right direction. So um, I had an audition last week for a show called Rake. It's a new Greg Kinnear show that's going to come out. Is it the Fox. Lawn and Garden show? No, where no, you go he's back and rake the yard. No, 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 this is this is where he's playing a um, uh, Greg Kinnear. Greg Kinnear is playing mm. a um, a attorney. lawyer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. who mm -hmm. uh, rake is a term that is used for somebody who is a, a, um, a, you know a handsome handsome young blade, a rake, a, a, a someone who is noticed uh, noticed by people and, and a little irreverent and everything else. Uh, you know, it's okay. It's uh, actually the piece of Shakespearean English has been uh, come from. Anyway, um, I had an audition last week. I've, third time I've been in for this particular ca casting director at Rake. Uh, obviously, they like me, which is a great thing. I just haven't, you know, been right for somebody yet. Found out uh, um, uh, on Thursday of last week that I was pinned for the episode. Pinned means that you are a favorite, maybe not the favorite, but one of two or three. Is it kind of like being on an avail? No, because on avail, well, I guess it is, because on avail means they're still deciding as well, right? Yeah, you're yeah, like so. one of three. They got yeah. you on avail because they don't know which one is going to be, so they want to make sure your schedule's clear, you know, right. set up, so you know they don't have to do this last second type of thing. Right. And so technically, yeah, I guess it's it's just like that. So. Um, I find out, but I find out on Thursday, I know the way TV shows work. I figure if I haven't heard by Friday, Friday yeah. I didn't get it. I definitely didn't hear anything by Monday, so I knew I didn't get it. Tuesday, right. I get a call. <laughs> All right. And I was the guy, and I was supposed to work to, uh, today. Uh, then they rescheduled me, and I'm working tomorrow. So it's, it's, a, it's a great little thing, little little one-liner, but I may be in a couple of scenes because I'm the bailiff of the court. Oh, nice. And I may, I may actually be standing in the courtroom at some point. And what point, is your but... line? Um, it's, uh, uh, oh, I, th I thought you guys had, uh, reached a decision. Oh, <laughs> there it is. Yeah, very dramatic. Very. Um, so, um, so this is good news for me. I've never, in my years in Los Angeles, I've never been able to say that I booked, um, two network shows in one month. Now you can. And now I can. Congratulations. Nice, I think really I, nice. I, I'll I drink to that. that. Yeah, huh? So there you go. Hopefully there'll be more. And, uh. Now let, let's let's review, shall we? Mm -hmm. uh, all last year, the concern was I haven't booked, I haven't booked, I haven't booked. Right. That was a concern. Right. Okay. And I exactly get that. Right. I exactly get that right. because you you know you go out there, you do the audition, you get you get your callbacks, and now and the callbacks aren't materializing. You're going, well, wait a minute, what's going on? Why can't I book something? Why am, what am I doing wrong? Or right. what you know exactly? Mm -hmm. Now, first month of this year. First month of this year, mm -hmm. you've booked a job, and it was like, all right, I booked a job. Mm -hmm. This is fantastic. This is mm -hmm. wonderful. Yes. And but now I, you know, I don't want this to be a one-off. You know, I don't, uh, you know, you know, I, I got, I got to book something else. I got to prove it's not a fluke. So here we are, still in the first month. Yes. And and we booked another gig. Yes. On a major network show. Yes. So what does that tell us? A, it wasn't a fluke. Right. B, we're doing the work. The, the work that we need to be doing. It right. was just just not your times, those other times, for whatever the reason. Right. And and see, uh, you know, you're, whatever you're doing now mm -hmm. is, is, is look like it's resonating with the people, yes. which is fantastic. Now, I do know one thing you've changed, and I don't know if this is the reason for it. Oh, look, here we go, here we go. Scores! All right, there we yeah. go. 
All right, Cody Hoskin with big blast on uh, on the Buffalo Sabres Carolina game. We're watching in the background. Sorry, but anyways, back to the story. Mm-hmm. The one of the things you did that's different this year compared to last year is you shaved. Yeah, I, I got rid of my uh, my uh, facial hair. Yeah, for the first time in my life since I was twelve. And years you were old, concerned about that. I was. Your self conscious concern because you've had it ever since I've known you. Yeah, I've had it since I was twelve. Yeah, there you go. I've, I didn't have the beard when I was twelve, but I had the mustache when I was twelve. Exactly. So. So that may be something doing whether they see you differently or or it's coming across differently, I don't know. Yeah. But that's that is a difference yes. compared to last year to this year. Yeah. Now the other thing is, uh, I think you've you may have gone at this year a little bit differently than last year. I, I I think you're, I think some of the conversations we've had off the mic was that hey I'm not gonna I'm not gonna let it just get to me. I'm just gonna go in there and play and have fun and just let it go and that's the end of it because. Yeah. That's all I can do. Yeah, and that's what I was trying to do in in the past year, but I'm not sure how much I was able to. You know what I mean? Exactly. It's like, exactly. I, I, I think that people who knew me well could oh. probably tell if uh, I was pressing it or not, if they were in the room with me. I feel like I wasn't. I feel like mm-hmm. I was doing a good job. But I was making a conscious effort as we came to the end of last year and the beginning of this year of of just really kind of saying, all right, it's 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 out of my hands. Right. You know, it's... it's, mm-hmm. it's it's uh, it's it's out there in the universe. It's out there in, in the world. Uh, you know, uh, um, it's once I've done my work, I've done my work. I walk away. You know, exactly. And and that's the thing. What I what I want you to and, and and you're probably already doing it is whatever you've done in the last month, compared to what you were doing last year, and to find those little tweaks, those little little differences, nuances, whatever. Whether it be the way you come into the room, mm-hmm. whether it be the way you. Tell them you're ready and you and you proceed with the audition. Whether it be the way you exit the room, mm-hmm. it, you know, find those things, uh, you know, impress, uh, embed them into your your psyche so you can be consistent in those things now going forward. Right. Because whatever it is, it's working, and you want to make sure you're consistent in the things that are working. Just like, you know, for whatever the reasons, we're consistent in the things that aren't working, and we don't know what the hell they are, and then we can't fix it. Right. Exactly. So right. you know. You know, those, those that's the key thing. Is once you finally find something that is working, you got to be able to replicate that over and over and over again. And it looks like you're doing that. So I'm proud of you, big man. Thank you very much. I'm I very proud that. of you. I really appreciate the kind words and all of that. And this is why we're out here. This is this is why we're doing this. Well, this you're out here yeah. right now. I'm not out there, but I'm I'm yeah. gonna get there. Yeah, and you are. You know, um, uh, but it's it feels good, and 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 of course. Rather than resting on my laurels, my next thought is, okay, where's the next one? Where's the next one? Where's mm-hmm. the next one? Because that's the only way I can compile any kind of a career is to get something going. And and possibly, the, the nice thing is, because of the way this has started, I have two ultra-fresh credits on my resume as we head into pilot season so that my my agents can pitch me and get me in the door possibly on some other of the things. some of the the other pilots and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So um, that's a big deal because if I can get in on a pilot, that's a, you know that's a great thing and and that's a paycheck and that's possibly a week's worth of work or two weeks worth of work. And if it gets picked up, then that's possibility of regular work for a while. But that's down the road, you know. Right. The, the, but it's just like as you put each block into place, um, trying to make it work. Uh, I'm I'm perfectly willing. To take a quantum leap and jump over all that and be a regular on a series, you know. Oh yeah, I'm, you know what? You know, I'm I perfectly willing for somebody to call me up and go, "Hey, you know what? We want you to come in for this, and uh, and you're the guy." But if that's not the way it's going to work, if I have to do this here and do that there to 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 be in people's eyes, uh, you know, for when it's time for me to do it, then that's fine too. You know. Well, that's that's the other thing I want to say. Make sure you know everybody knows what you've done. And including your your voiceover guy, even though it's not voiceover work you've booked, mm-hmm. let them know you're booking. Yeah, because they want to they're going to say, hey, you're hot. Whatever yeah. you're doing, you know, I want to get you out there on more stuff or whatever. Tell them what you did, who your book, what, you know, what the characters are, so that maybe the, there's a, the the bailiff guy that they want for the ne- for the next voiceover guy. Right, you know exactly I mean? right. Who knows? And you, you know? never know. And they, hey, I just got booked for that, so obviously I could be that guy. So, yeah. so that was that was my week. And uh, the awesome nice thing week. is, I uh, got you know calls from my uh, my manager. Um, uh, asking me, there's two different uh, films that they're pitching me for right now. Uh, one of which I'm going to do uh, uh, um, uh, um, uh, submission on tape. Uh, I'm going to be taping myself, and I have uh-huh. to get it to her by Tuesday. So you know, that's one of the things I'm going to be working on Great. for a comedy uh, movie. And um, and then another one where she called me and said, "How's your uh, 
how's your Scottish accent? And I said, well, you give me, give me a little practice and uh, I'm fine. I said, I have a friend who's uh, outrageous at it. And uh, I, I, I have no doubt about uh, anything that can be happened. Uh, I just have to have a, a, a wee moment with the man and, uh, and be able to clean up what, uh, what I've got already. So, there you go. You know, um, I got some fresh haggis for you here. Oh, right oh boy, yeah. <laughs> Barley in a sheep stomach. Oh, there you go. Mm, mm, yum. Oh, nice, nice. A little warm. I'm going to let it cool down first, all right? So. Yes. Um, so that was my week, uh, and, and I'm very, very pleased with that, and I appreciate the good word and everything. I, um, I'm happy to hear that you are feeling better Yeah. after a little relapse and everything else. So tell me about your week, man. My, well, my week was, uh, it's all right. Uh, the, the important, oh, man, it just scored. That was a good shot. Carolina's tied it up one-to-one. -one. Oh, wow. um, the, like you said, what I had, I don't wish on anybody, and I not only had it, I got it again. And but this time I was proactive about it. I mm -hmm. called the doc. Doc got me the same drugs back, and I didn't w let it get into me for two weeks without any drugs. So I got it. I got on top of it pretty quick. It seemed like it took longer to kick it out. And the first time I took the drugs, it was like day three and four. It was pretty much gone by the time day seven hit. You know, it was, mm -hmm. this time it took almost seven days before I felt better. But it, but I, I don't feel any remnants of it right now, so I'm, I'm real encouraged. I've actually started doing some working, you know, working out because prior to that I was just so exhausted and just so tired, and my body ached all over because it, this thing just knocks you out physically as well as, you know, anything else, you know, all the the coughing and stuff. But uh, uh, the drugs, the drugs worked. I feel good. Uh, so I'm going to start getting back into my exercise routine. Good. And uh, and go from there. I, I also got a call from my, uh, 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 I guess, boss who runs the after-school program that I teach chess in, and he mm -hmm. wants me to take a more active role in that. So, uh, oh, that's cool. Yeah, so that's kind of Does that mean nice. more money? or It'll mean more, t more days being able to do it. Right now I'm on three days a week, and uh, I should be around four. Uh, I'm anywhere from two to two to three days a week, so I, I want to do four days a week uh, and still have a Thursday off so I, we can tape our show. Yeah, and uh, and that's probably what it's going to lead to a four day schedule, which is nice. And I enjoy I enjoy I enjoy being with the kids. I enjoy watching the kids light up when they play. Obviously, you get you get your kids. You, you know, they have their personalities. Some are, you know, they start crying when they lose. Some are very competitive. Some don't care, right? And and some want to learn, you know. So you get all that mix, you, and you got to be able to uh, uh, find which ones want to learn, so you can teach them. You got to keep the competitive ones going because you know they they want to they want to win all the times. Then you got the kids that don't care; they're just there because mommy wants you know needs something for them to do until they can come pick them up for an you know an right. hour and a half later, or something to put on their resume for college or right. whatever, right? Yeah. And. Uh, so you got to try to figure out a way of, of making it interesting enough for them to, to stay there and, and be engaged for an hour and a half, and then and then the ones that that cry when they lose, you got to let them understand that you know it's a game, you know we want to win, but you're not going to win all the time, and right. that's okay. I know? think that's so actually I, a character building thing. If you yeah. can get them get that across, those kids are going to be much stronger in the future, even than the ones that win all the time. Yeah, you know? and so. you know this day and age where everybody gets a ribbon, everybody gets a medal. You know, you know, back in our day, you didn't win. No. Sometimes you lost. You lost. And, if you and lost, that's, that's you watch the other kids get the ice cream or whatever. Exactly. And that's, that's just the way it was. You know, you and, know? and that's just the way, the way it is, and that's okay. So, you know, it's just being able to uh, sit through and, and, and try to get, you know, get through to the kids and, and take something that's typically pretty boring, which is chess, you know. It can be. It's, yeah. if, you're, if you're not into the intellectual aspect of it, it can mm -hmm. be pretty doggone yeah. boring, you know, but... But the couple of days a week, we have about 30. I mean, one class, we got 36 kids. Gee whiz. And there's like two of us. Another class, we got like 28. So it's just, you know, you want to give as much time as you can. A lot of times I end up playing somebody because there's usually an odd person. Because mm -hmm. you got to have two people to play. And if there's an odd number, there's one kid sitting, I don't got anybody to play. So I'll sit down and play. And that's where you really get get a chance to to see what their how their thought process is as well as you know, where the weaknesses are so you can try to help them. And, 
and it's interesting. The last couple of times I played, I played kids that were really good, mm -hmm. and they've taken me to the limit. And I'm like, wait a minute, I'm used to beating these guys, and these guys are holding their, own, you know, not even holding their own. They got me on the defensive. So, so it's 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 good. It's enjoyable. I'm having fun with it, and hopefully I can make a little bit more money because uh, it doesn't, you know, it's not a full time job, but it's it's a job. It's, right, right. It's a job. So with that said, uh, you know, work is going good. I, I'm back into a five-day-a-week schedule with my other job with the door company, Vortex. Good. So, uh, And the snow hasn't been affecting you? Yeah, no, no. The snow has not been affecting me over here, so <laughs> that's a good thing as well. Although, the, <laughs> if it rains, they don't want us out, out there, so that's why I'm happy it doesn't rain that much. So, yeah. But other than that, uh, I, I just my goal, and I told you this before, is i, I got to get healthy, which I'm now finally healthy. I feel good enough to, to actually do something physical. Uh, and the next thing is to lose some weight. Yeah. And then if I can lose some weight, then I can get myself back out there in front of some people so they can see, you know, that I'm back in it and back, you know, trying to make a go of it. So, so that's, that's what I'm, that's the plan. That's, that's what we're going to be working. From an ego standpoint, uh, I mean, you, 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 you don't let yourself go. You don't look like a slob to me or anything like that. You know, it's like you carry an extra weight. Yes. But you know, it's, it's not a bad thing. I myself, I carry too much weight. I know it, and it's just been a steady progression over the years of, of me letting things pile up. And most of it's been emotional and lack of discipline on my part. But I had a moment, like, I've, I've been very, very fortunate in that my body has been strong and, and, and healthy most of the time. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, and it goes back to some of the basics that my dad got me when I was a teenager. I, I, uh, I was an Olympic-style lifter when I was uh, f uh, 15, 16, and 17 years old. Okay. Um, so there's some I strength. Good, yeah. I have a good, solid base of muscle and, and, and mechanics, uh, biomechanics and movement. Um, and I've still got a, still a fair amount of muscle sitting on my system, even though I really haven't worked out for anything mm -hmm. for over a year. I mean, okay. a little bit here, a little bit there, but nothing enough to keep it up, right? So one of my side jobs is doing massage. I'm a, I'm a, a certified massage ther uh, therapist in the state of California. Uh, I, uh, I'm fully licensed and, and uh, um, insured. And I got hired by UCLA as a part-timer instructor to go over and do massages for the kids in the dorms uh, doing my chair massage. Last right. night, I had one of those gigs. I'm there with a bunch of, uh, you know, 18, 19, 20, 21-year-old kids. Whippersnappers. Um <laughs> And I'm there in my uh, in my you know T-shirt that says instructor on it, you know UCLA uh, Rec Center instructor. And the setup I had, I was directly in front of a big picture window, and it's nighttime, so I basically can sort of see my reflection as I'm working on people. Okay. I don't spend a whole lot of time staring at myself in the mirror, you know, but I'm I'm just catching it out of the corner of my eye. Physically, if we can subtract my center. I'm still in really good shape. Like I've got shoulders, I got arms, I've got forearms, I got all this muscle that's still sitting there that's clear. It's not like just you know, and um, uh, uh, it's it's one of those things where um, uh, you know I, I noticed that and I realized if I can just get my shit together and cut the weight, mm -hmm. and it's going to be a significant amount of weight. I mean, I, I need to cut between fifty and a hundred pounds to to be effective, um, uh, but I can look like a, a viable human being again for myself. You yeah, know? I hear you. It's a, I hear that's you. a big deal. So I, I'm, you know, when you talk about getting yourself in shape and everything else, I'm proud of that. And I also need to, uh, need to support that by doing it myself. So. All right. Well, speaking of uh, uh, Avengers, Agents of Shield. Right. Uh, normally, this is, a, this is the time of the uh, podcast that, all, that we, so. uh, <laughs> 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 where we talk about the segment. latest episode of Agents, uh, Avengers, Agents of Shield. And the reason we haven't brought it up sooner is because there wasn't there one. There wasn't one. Last night. <laughs> I call, I text you and I'm saying, "Hey, uh, my 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 DVR didn't tape the ep the episode. I must have screwed something up or whatever. Uh, we're gonna have to watch it online right. because I don't have a recording of it." Right. And I was like bummed. I'm like pissed off because it's. The, I really look forward to that show. Yeah, I get that. And. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, you can watch it here. You can watch it on Hulu. You can go to ABC. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, cool, cool, cool. So I get home. I'm rushing. I mean, I mean, I 
I go to the normal way home, and they got a big traffic jam. I'm swearing up and down. I'm like, man, this is cutting into my agents of shield time. Because <laughs> I gotta get, to, I gotta get home, and I only left myself like an hour and a half, and the show's an hour, and I'm like, I only got a half hour to play with. And I'm sitting in traffic for 20 minutes. Finally, mm. I turn around, go the other way, get on the uh, highway, get home, and I get running home, and all of a sudden I get a text from you saying. Uh, it doesn't look like they uh, shot the episode because it's not on the internet. And I'm like, oh, man. So that would explain why it didn't tape. is because they didn't have an epi- a new episode this week. Right, right. That's, I don't understand that. Why did they do that? But they'll, I'm sure they'll tell us next week, right? Right, right. Okay, uh, so, one would hope, and if that's if they're doing one next week. So. Yeah, that's true. The, well, it it is uh, uh, Super Bowl weekend next weekend, not this weekend coming up. This weekend is the Pro Bowl. Right. And what you were watching when you came in, uh, we were setting up for the podcast, was a replay of the, what they call the Super Bowl draft, or the, right, Pro, the Pro, Bowl, Bowl draft. Pro Bowl draft, which is the ultimate fantasy football. Right. Because... If you've ever uh, been in fantasy football, you you become a coach or a GM, and then you draft your team by picking players at different positions uh, to be on your team. Usually it's running backs, uh, wide receivers, quarterbacks. You pick a defense. You pick a kicker. Uh, that's about as, as detailed as it gets. Well, here, this is the ultimate fantasy football because not only were they drafting these players, they would actually walk down <laughs> – because mm-hmm. <laughs> they were physically there. Right. So they, they actually could interview them, talk to them, say, how do you feel about being taken first? Or how do you feel about being first position, you know, first wide receiver taken and stuff like that? Because it would, they're all in Hawaii right now because they're playing the Pro Bowl this Sunday. So that was kind of neat. That was kind yep. of interesting. And as it turns out, I guess uh, Deion Sanders and Jerry Rice are the two uh, uh, franchise uh, owners, as you could say, who are the ones who are doing the draft. And apparently they've been pushing uh, the NFL for letting them play in the game because they want to go one-on-one against each other. <laughs> they still haven't said whether or not they're going to let them, but right up during the draft they're going, we're going to play, we're going to play. And Jerry's going, yeah, bring it, bring it, Neon, Dion, bring it. I'm going to, I'm going to smoke you. So they're, they're, they're trash-talking each other while they're drafting. It's just, it was pretty cool. That sounds like fun, man. That's, that's I, I'm good. sorry I missed some of that, but uh, that's cool. Um, so, uh, uh, well, just bouncing around some of the different things that have caught our eye here in Hollywood, in Los Angeles, uh, you get all of the different, um, uh, celebrities that live in the area. You have people who keep a really low profile and then you have people who don't so that's much right. keep a low profile. And, uh, who, who could you be alluding to? Oh, well, you know, I, I just laughed my ass off when I woke up and, and found out that Justin Bieber had actually been arrested. The Beef. Yeah. Yes, right. The had, Beef. Gee, Wally. Yeah, had, well, but with a B. <laughs> uh, yeah, but uh, he'd been arrested for uh, street racing. Now, yeah. we just lost the one guy, um, you know, you know, a month and a half ago to them, you yeah, know. Yeah, Peter driving, from Fast and Furious. Yeah, Fast and Furious. And Peter was, Welsh or something yeah, like that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And here's, uh, here's a drunken Bieber. Yeah. Uh, you know, on something, DWI, alleged, I should say alleged, well, alleged because, DWI, you know, right. resisting res- uh, arrest, yeah. told the cop that he not only was drinking, he did marijuana and other prescription drugs, mm. uh, and he's got a suspended driver's license. And he was driving a rented a rented Lamborghini. Yeah. yeah just like... And oh, apparently, God. the latest article I read is his father was there... Uh, uh, cutting off traffic to give him a, a, a stretch that they could actually run run the, the drag race in. So his father's complicit in all this. This is craziness, this, man. This, this is nuts. This is a young man who, uh, you know, has a, a, just an a astonishing amount of money and recognition well, it, I, at, I, a, at a time in his life when he needs a little bit of... of guidance. Yeah, just some guidance. And he's getting none, or all the guidance he's getting are from from sycophantic yes men who are there to yeah. suck the money away from him. You Don't know? get me so, wrong; the kid's got talent. I'll give yeah. him. Uh, you know, he's got talent. Obviously, for the people who love him, he's 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 wonderful. Apparently, you know, so. when he's eight years old, he could play the drums, play the piano, and play you know the guitar. So yeah. I mean, I mean, the kid's got talent. Mm-hmm. That's okay. But the kid needs some uh, some parental guidance. That, that say, hey, kid, you you this is not how you want to live the rest of your life. This is not the way you want to go. And you better snap out of it, or you're going to be in trouble. And right now, guess what? He's, He's in, in trouble. trouble. He's yeah. in trouble. And this is the second time the police have been out to, you know, that they've been on to him. Like here in L.A., they went out to his house to investigate, you know, when he and his friends who had nothing better to do. Egg and houses. Egg and houses. God, uh, Supposedly caused enough damage to one house with eggs 
uh, to warrant it as a felony. So they actually had to send, you know, detectives out to look things over and, and in the process, wound up arresting one of um, uh, Bieber's entourage who had cocaine just sitting out and around. Yeah, the house. apparently, apparently when they went through the house, it was drugs all over the place, yeah. but. Uh, you know, that's not why they were there. Yeah, and I got to be honest, my, my own thing, like, you know, like I said, we've talked about some of the things. I, I, I lean a little more liberal towards certain things. I don't really give a crap that anybody's doing drugs. I give a crap when it affects the people around them. You right. know, like if you're going to drink and drive, I'm going to be pissed at you. If you're going to um, if you're gonna smoke up, eh, most of the time marijuana is just going to make you drive slower. But I still don't like the idea of being impaired when you're behind the wheel. Right. Uh, any other drugs, it really, as far as I'm concerned, it's your business as long as you're not hurting anybody else. Yeah, if you're staying but, in the house, yeah, and you want to party. But the fact of the matter is, is it's illegal. Yeah. It's illegal. And right now to have it, it just out and around like that, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not making a moral judgment. I'm making a legal judgment. It's like, oh, my God, you guys are stupid. Yeah. So, uh, you know, but I, I had a, a really good laugh. And then, of course, there's a, a wonderful um, uh, artist on the uh, uh, on the internet, a guy who puts out a thing called theoatmeal.com, which entertains me. A lot of the stuff that he has out there is really funny. He's a very smart guy. He creates some great stuff. Um, there's a, uh, 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 some different things. He had written something when Bieber first came to uh, uh, entertain, entertainment um, mm -hmm. With the uh, with the idea of uh, he it was a um, a quiz how many Biebers can you fight, and um, uh, the, uh, the you take this quiz that has all of these absolutely ridiculous questions, and at the end of it you're assigned an, an arbitrary number of Biebers that you could defeat in a in a fight. <laughs> okay. um, and so I, I took I took the quiz. It's hysterical. It's just okay. ridiculous. I took the quiz because it entertained me. I can I am apparently qualified to defeat up to twenty eight Biebers. Very in, good in, in one fight Impressive. because of, because Impressive. Of, because of my size, my background, my martial arts uh, uh, status, and all of that stuff. So you know, um, so and, it's kind of like we'll call you the Neo of just. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sure there's other people out there who can actually. Mr. Anderson. Yes, that was good. That was pretty good. I like that. So that's one of my favorite. I I love hearing uh, Hugo Weaving's uh, st uh, pattern of of speech. I'll tell you what, you, you gotta love Hugo Weaving's. I mean, he was in the uh, the, the, the Matrix. The Matrix. Fellowship of the Rings. Yes, the Lord of the Rings. He plays and, that elfin guy. Mm -hmm. And V for Vendetta. Yes. With a mask on for the entire film. Yeah. You never see his face, and yet you get all of the emotion uh, from his vo voice and his body. And he's the voice of Megatron of the tra tra uh, Transformers movies. Really? Although he totally, 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 uh, 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 what's the right word? Uh, basically says it's bullshit that that whole series is bullshit, but they pay me, I do it. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. That's he totally cool. what was it? Not bad mouths, but basically, you know, says it's crap, and it's like, yeah, hey, you know. He goes, if I'd have known it was this type of movie, I never would have said yes. But since I said yes, I got to do it. You know, come yeah. here, Prime. You know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, but it's that's Hugo Weaving, man, yeah, and it's yeah. like he's awesome. He's yeah, he's, awesome. he's he's good at what he does, and he's he's entertaining. But that 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 particular. Come here, Mr. Anderson. Yes. Um, just that the Mr. very spe Anderson. specific speech oh, yeah. pattern. Yeah, and he made totally made that character up. So, That's right. What do we got here? What is this? Okay, uh, well, that, that'll, that'll wait. The next okay. one I want to talk to you about, uh, there is um, a, cha a challenge or a bet out there. You know how you, if you pick the, the March Madness, you know, mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. brackets, right? Mm -hmm, right? You know, the president does it every year. He makes a big thing out of it where he picks all the teams, 64 teams, then he goes down to who's in the final four and then right. who wins the NCAA tournament. Well, apparently there is um, uh, a contest out there that if you pick every game correct, mm -hmm. so 64 correct. Right. All right. Which the odds of that are uh, astronomical. Well, I guess it's one in a billion. You'll win a billion dollars. Ah, from whom? That's the thing. So they're like, okay, we want to do this 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 contest bet, whatever. So they said, well, we can't because we're going to get a billion dollars. Well, Warren Buffett stepped up and said, if someone picks all 64, I'll insure it. Wow. Warren Buffett, baby. Warren Buffett is, <laughs> he's got is billions. Not... He's got billions in his top drawer. He doesn't know what to do with yeah, Okay, let's face it. He's got he's, money coming out of it. He's him. also a guy who doesn't take, uh, um, he, like, he doesn't do anything but sure bets. So right. the likelihood is that nobody's he's pretty sure it. Nobody's that nobody's do ever it. going to do it. You know, this is not a guy. And and probably has enough, the guy has enough of a, an awareness of himself and sense of humor that, that, you know, the idea of somebody actually getting it, he would just be like, 
Wow. Yeah, right. I'll pay. Right. Yeah, I'll pay. All right. Vet it. Vet it. Make sure that nobody cheated. Yeah. Okay. Boom. Boom. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Warren Buffett. I'll tell you, he's pretty cool. He's a pretty cool guy. He's amazing, and 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 more people should pay attention. Not the least of which is his his uh, his attitude towards the the rich and the poor in the world. You know, like, well, like know. he's one of those guys who talks about the idea of the rich actually having some responsibility towards everybody else. There. Well, around, remember, I you told know? you to. I told you about a series that I really got off on and really enjoyed. Was it America about all the 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 the, the four great uh, people right, right. Uh, in history who built America? Right. Yeah. Who the people who built America? I think was the name of the series. Yeah. It was a Rockefeller and Rockefeller, and, uh, Vanderbilt, Carnegie, and uh, I think Ford was the other one. Yeah. But uh, you know, one of the things that Carnegie and Rockefeller did because they were both considered the richest men in the world. Right. You know, back back then, where they were having hundreds of millions of dollars, which would be tens of to fifty B- billions of dollars yeah. of today's money, because mm-hmm. we're talking the turn of the century of the eighteen late eighteen hundreds, early nineteen nineteen hundreds. One of the things they did once once they have accumulated all that all that riches and power, is when they got older and when I in their later years, they decided to become philanthropy with it and yeah, gave the it. money away. Yeah. And then it became not only the contest of how they could be. Who would be the richest? Then it became the contest who could give the most away. Right. So, you know, one of the things they did is they found they saw the light. Mm-hmm. Whatever you know, whatever you know, the, the person they became, in order to accumulate that wealth, because not all the time it means you're a good person. What it, what it did is it trans, translated it and turned into something something good at the end. So, you know, I, I give them kudos for that. Mm-hmm. And and Warren's kind of the same way. Warren Gates is the other guy who gave a lot. He's saying, "Hey, yep. when I go, when I go, it's all going. Yeah, it's all going out to some yeah. uh, to to this cause, this cause, this cause, and this cause." Gates and, I think, and his wife I think have Buffett done a lot. gave it to Gates. Yeah, I think Buffett said, "Hey, I I don't want it when I'm done. Give it all out." And yeah. Gates is going to be overseeing all that. So, yeah. so kudos to them. Yeah, because you know deal. it's. It's one thing to accumulate that. It's another thing to, to, to not allow it to, to turn into something good. Yeah. And I think they're doing that. So yeah. kudos. So. Uh, next story. Uh, let's see. Klondike. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You know I like Gold Rush. Right. Mm-hmm. Right? right. I like it. Discover- it's, is it A&E or Discovery, Discovery Channel? Discovery Channel. Channel. Right. It's, okay. it's a what they call a reality show. Mm-hmm. And you know how reality shows are. A lot of it's scripted. Right. Or they say, hey, this is what we're going to do today. Well, in these types of shows, because they're out in the elements, there's not, you know, they can't tell you, all right, now we're going to pull, you know, the bulldozer is going to break and this is how we're going to fix it. Right. Because this is, it's not this type of show because they're putting t- tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars of their own money. It's a different game. It's intermission. Huh. Uh, on the line and, and it's their money. So the last thing they want to do is have things screw up on purpose just right. to make a show. Right. So really these people are observing the day-to-day activities. Okay? Yeah. Now now is the time when we discover gold. No? Yeah. No? Oh. Yeah. Okay. Right. Exactly. No. So you know they want to do what they can to capture it the best way but they pretty much let these guys go at it and do what they got to do. Well... They had such good success with their, quote, reality shows. Uh, the next step that uh, Discovery wanted to do is what they call scripted scripted shows. Okay. So they they have a scripted show called Klondike. Oh, which, I've seen some ads for that. Yes. That, yeah, it looked very interesting. Yes, and it was, it's three what they call like documentary type things where they take the story of the gold rush, right. which is 